Most Amazon sellers think they know how to use Keepa completely, but they're only scratching the surface. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the hidden features that most sellers overlook. These features can help you find better products and avoid bad ones while making a lot more profit. With all that being said, let's get right into this video. We're gonna start out here on just any Amazon product page. This is gonna be focused more on products that have variations for this one. Then we're gonna switch over to one that doesn't have variations to show a couple other features that are, are pretty helpful that not a lot of people know about. So when we're coming into here, since there are variations on this product, there's gonna be this variations tab here. We're gonna start off inside of there and we're gonna see all the different colors, sizes, if it's different products like clothing, there will be different sizes or if there was maybe a different size backpack in here, there would be those too. But this one is just different colors. Same point across all of them here. But the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna see on the top here that we can filter by different things. So if you had, for example, a minimum price that your supplier worked for, you could sort it from highest to lowest or lowest to highest, go through here, find the bottom price, maybe it was like 150 or something. So this would be the cutoff and then you would take a look at these products here. You can see the buy box price here and then the offer count to qualify and disqualify different products along there like this looks like good offer count movement a little different in here for the buy box it's a little up and down but if you're we're good at the 170 then this would be a good chart to see and you would want to open up this product just by clicking on one of these titles here it'll bring you to the new amazon page and we'll just go up through the different listings just like this and say okay this doesn't look like it has much offer movement we'll skip past that one this one was good here it's a little bit slow here but it's probably because how high the price is. So if you wanted to, you could come in on this listing, drop the price a little bit, or see if it sells at this one. If it's not selling as well as you'd like, then drop the price down, and I'm sure that this offer count movement would start to move a little bit more. Going through here also, on some listings, you'll also see numbers in this bought in past month here, which if you wanna sort by that to get the fastest selling item, then that's definitely something to consider. Over here, not too much other information, but an old thing that isn't as relevant anymore is sorting by the ratings percentage. And back in the day, and still kind of relevant now, but not so much because some may have good offer count with low ratings, but you can assume that if a product has a lot of ratings on it, it is a pretty fast selling product to be able to get that amount of ratings there. The biggest thing in this page that's not a part of this table automatically is going to be this button here, include out of stock and historical variations. If we click that, we can see down in this list now that this one showed up, this one showed up, this one did also. So if you're looking primarily for products that sold good that are now out of stock, you'll wanna click on that button. The only thing with this is you're not gonna see the charts in here. You're only gonna see the pricing and then you're gonna get the ASIN and what the offer count was before. So if we click on this box here and copy this ASIN, we can come over to keepa.com and go to search here, enter the ASIN in here and search for it and then we'll be able to see the charts. So you'll be able to tell if this product was selling good or not. And it does look like it's got a pretty good offer movement going on in here. And we can see just to verify that this is the right picture there. And it did have a very good offer count movement in here, a little slow at the end, but for the historical data, it does look like a very good selling product, which is probably one of the reasons why it's out of stock to begin with. So that's gonna be something that you'll always want to check if you find a product that's good, Maybe not with so many of these different colors, but it also works for this. If maybe you sell already one size of a piece of clothing or something, and you want to experiment or experiment with the other sizes that have been sold out, you can get the ASINs right from here and then start to sell those as well and test them out. Moving on to the one without a variation here, the biggest thing with this and for the reason why we don't want variations is because this is gonna be more accurate. If we come into the data tab, 
and then go to offers, we'll be able to see how many units people have been selling for, depending on your date range, 7, 30, 90, 180, or 365 days here. And we'll see that in this chart over here. And we can see that it does say 15 plus or minus there, 24, 7. We could even sort by who sold the most in the last 30 days if we click it again. And we've got 150 here, which this doesn't look to be genuine sales in here because it was within a day or so, a couple hours, two hours. But this is a good reference to have if you're trying to gauge velocity on different items. And we can also see over here their pricing. So maybe one of the slower ones here with nine is because their price was a lot higher than others. And we can just go through, check different pricing versus their offer counts and stock counts and see how many that they've sold. And we can also, if we scroll all the way over, we can see how long they first came on the listing. So this guy 23 months ago sold 210 depending on how often he was out of stock. It might not be every month he had stock, so it could be a little bit off and take this with a grain of salt. But you can even open up their store names in here and see what other products they're selling and then how long ago they were seen on the listing. Were they FBA? Did they have Prime? All this different information in here that not a lot of people know is in here because this hasn't been around for that long. It's one of the new features within like the last year or so that's been rolled out. We can even filter by FBA only if you don't care to look at merchant fulfilled offers or if you're only doing merchant fulfilled, you can flip it and see last 30 days, this FBM seller has sold 24 and this one has sold almost 1700 in nine months. So that's a pretty good sold count right there. So this would be a pretty good listing to get onto if you can get onto it cheap enough. Another part in this that works for both types of products is the buy box statistics here, which we've talked about in other videos, but still not, not a lot of people check this. And this is gonna show you same date range options up here, except you can do all time. But we can see in the last 30 days here what the buy box price was with how often it was. And then also when they last won it here, the seller, their average offer count and stock, we don't really ever pay attention to that or anything else on the right hand side here. It's mainly just the percentage and the price and when it was last won. Because if you're hoping to sell this at, I don't know, $25 and then you come in here and you see, oh wow, everything is 23 or less, maybe 24 ish. But the only one above that is here 11 days ago less than 1%, you'll probably have to reevaluate what type of price you're trying to sell this product at. The last part of this Keepa extension that not a lot of people know about because maybe not a lot of people go through the Amazon search results like this is when you're looking at products on here, if you hover over their name here or the picture, you can see in the right hand corner on the bottom, it popped up a Keepa chart here. And this is going to be helpful if you're doing this kind of sourcing or you're just looking up a brand and just want to know like what kind of products are possibility, then you can go ahead in here and check what the Keepa charts look like. Although it does not work when it says sponsored products here because those are sponsored ads. It's not pulling those. But if anything doesn't say sponsored, you'll be able to see it come up. And then when it pushes all the way to the right side, it goes to the left side. But you get the idea here that this could be helpful if maybe you're doing this on your own or you have a VA and you say you want to look at a different brand and then they can run through and just kind of check off different products in this list instead of going through other methods of sourcing. And you can see none of these show up again, sponsored products. And then when it's a non-sponsored product, it does show up there. And the way that we're going to turn that on is going to be by coming to any Amazon product page, going over to the settings tab right here. And we're going to scroll all the way down until we see this here in the add-on settings. And you can set all of your different preferences on these, but you just want to make sure that you have 
show price history graphs as overlays checked as yes and then that way it's going to show up because some some people might not have this on i don't know if it comes on by default i'm pretty sure it does but just in case i wanted to show you guys how to turn this on let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions about any of these features in the video and if you have any other suggestions that you want to know more about with Keepa. There's also a link in the description if you want my help one-on-one -on -one, either starting or growing an Amazon business. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.